cybernetic organism, living tissue of a metal endoskeleton, sorry. Sorry about that. Terminators are built to blend in by replicating the largest organ in the human body. But how long would a disguise like that hold up? Here are some clips from the latest Terminator film. Notice anything different? Like the fact that a robot looks 60 years old? How does something like a Terminator age? Well, that feasibly has something to do with the skin that the Terminator is in, but without the rest of the human body attached, it's just metal, how does it live? To get through a time machine in the Terminator universe, you have to be covered with organic matter. And nothing else, wink, 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 anyway. That means covering a robotic assassin with around two square meters of skin, or about 27 medium pizzas. Yeah, sure, that's a weird comparison. But that's only the first step. This skin would need at least a little bit of blood flowing to it to give it that humanish hue. Bodies drained of blood look a little, well, terminated. Then there's maintenance. Your skin needs a lot of nutrients to stay healthy from water to fatty acids, and it overturns every skin cell on your surface every two weeks or so to make sure that everything stays fresh. Of course, the Terminator wouldn't need all of this if it was on a short mission. Based on what we know about human decomposition rates, for example, its skin may not become noticeably disintegrated or smelling like dead cats for a few days or even a few weeks. But you think that Skynet might think a little bit ahead on this one. So does anything in the Terminator films actually suggest that it is living skin, baby? Well, in the first Terminator film, we learn that Terminators can bleed, sweat, and their skin can become infected as if it were real human tissue that was damaged. And in the second film, Sarah Connor learns that Terminator wounds can heal themselves and quickly. Your clothes, give them to me. No. Sorry. So if there was living skin covering a Terminator, it's feasible that it would age extrinsically, or from the outside it would develop wrinkles and damage due to weather exposure and pollutants in the sun and maybe an impact with a helicopter. Our skin also ages intrinsically or from within as our body develops diseases and acquires genetic baggage and we produce less collagen for our skin to use, but I doubt that Skynet went this far. So where does that leave the question of the skin that wants to live? Well, surprisingly, we should have had these questions answered for us in the first film, but the lines were cut. Here is Kyle Reese's full description of the Terminator from the first film's novelization of the script. Cybernetic organism, a machine put together with a living thing. The skin and some layers underneath it, the hair, the surface of the eyes and inside of the mouth, all that stuff's human tissue, genetically designed for the cyborgs. It has to eat and breathe to keep the skin alive, though a lot less than us. And there's a little tiny heart and internal organs about the size of a chicken's in a recessed compartment. So there you have it. Terminators might indeed age as their skin, kept alive by tiny chicken-sized organs pumping blood and nutrients to it, is weathered by pollution and outside exposure and, of course, gunfights. However, would this process give Mr. Universe the skin of a 60-year-old governor? I'm not so sure. Why? Because science. Come on, let's go do the thing. Let's keep sciencing over here. Want more science? Check out my last video on the science of eating brains. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos if you want, because science two days earlier than anyone else, head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks.